the Cuna Potato Kings are undergoing a season of change. As farmers do when they harvest their crop of potatoes, they too enter a new season and plant again. Big Mitch is gone. Emmanuel Pepper came in and did his best as a true freshman, but last season was a wash. We took a step back and went six and seven, lost our third bowl game in a row. Old McDonald assures the critics this was a necessary season of growth. With an overwhelming theme of growth, I can sense this year will be the best one yet. A quarterback battle between Pepper and Bull Honestly, 95 speed freshman looks like a bit as well. So many rising spuds. It's go time for this group of guys. We definitely can compete now, but I'm always keeping an eye on the future for Potato King football. And that future includes a handful of four stars interested in us. As per usual, I took a flyer on the handful of five stars. They honestly just have to taste it and try it for themselves. Once they engulf an Idaho potato, there's no going back. I think disappointing is the right adjective to describe the look at this class. Count busts with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Two of them being five stars, and I only got through about 20, 22 scouted out. With half of them being bust, we did land a few gems. Steven Whitaker would be a nice addition. And I kid you not, I would need to look no further for quarterback than Sheriff Flood. 95 speed, 95 throw power. These type of athletes were nerfed after the patch, and clearly we still got one of them. Generational. Rico's on the radar, and yeah, that's really it right now. In the Mountain West, we have Potato Kings ascending to their rightful spot here. First team honors. One, two punch, Danny Berger, Mitch Bloom. Smack dab in the bottom third of FBS schools, 82nd in championship contender. This is the year we rise up that list. And point blank, we need to. So many players at risk and good ones, including Keglar, Spruce, Palcio, Jose, Jose, four and five stars everywhere. For all of their sake, I really hope old McDonald dials up something special looking at this schedule ahead. On the road against ranked Purdue might be the toughest test, but truly never overlook anyone, especially in back-to-back -back rivalry weeks. As they say, this is where the fun begins. Buckle in, especially if you give a hoot about the Owls. Not to be twisted with Kennesaw State, Florida Atlantic made the trek across country to Idaho. Good first look at the team here. Opening drive. We're just going to dump this one out to the running back Smythe, who has a step and a first down. Also a good first look at Bullock. This is his first collegiate start since Pepper pretty much had all of it on lock last season. Old McDonald was impressed by the spring game. One thing leads to another, as you may know, and voila, he's got himself the job. Now that he's here, by no means can he coast. He has to keep the pedal on the metal. Should have a good batch of dudes to work with. Let's go ahead and go to one of those dudes, Heitman, in against double coverage. The booth wants to do us dirty, so they're going to take an extra look at it, but yeah, that's textbook. Bullock with a clean drive down the field in his first ever. Gonna look to finish it here with six points dropped, which means we're gonna have to take our shot here to the end zone on this play, and Vilma is the right guy for it. We're not messing around with none of that six win garbage from last season. That is long gone, out the system, no doubt about it. Garbage in, garbage out. It's a new mentality here. Up 20 to zero, we're at the inches line here. I'm gonna run a QB power. It is dangerous, I'm not gonna lie i was just hoping we could get the edge and we do wow that could have been a safety much better here room to breathe gonna let kiro take a snap here on third and two i he, the right idea just got clotheslined by his own lineman bullock doing his best jalen hurts impression out here gonna take another qb power and it's gonna work out maybe more realistically cam newton was the one that did that all the time so that is a better comp just about 20 seconds left here in the half gonna launch one to vilma who is the villain for defenses across the nation keep playing like this i'm jazzed for this era of cuna king football encouraging results across the board in this one until we just did that maybe the alignment can turn around and pick it up 95 is going to swoop in and recover. The best part of this whole ideal is a sweaty defensive performance, making the stop all day long. Our good friend Sal has been here for a while, so we're going to go ahead and do right by him. Giving him touches to close out this game, one snap at a time, trying to close it out. Third down, back to the air. Look who is open again. Ville. Ma, absolutely vile performance from FAU Corners, that is. Why did no one ever pick up this assignment after the damage 
he's done. Just gonna come out and say this, this is not an FCS opponent. This is an FBS team. The Owls are not that shabby. And in his first start, Bullock is making a fool out of the Owls. Look at him go. At this point, it's completely unnecessary to rub it in, but you know what they say, when growing potatoes, you go only for the gold spuds. All right, no one says that, but Sal wants himself a gold spud after the game. He wants extra points. You already knew it was over. Everyone else did too. Just tacking it on and letting some other receivers like our tight end get in on the fun. It's a good year to be a Potato King fan. All aboard the hype train. Did you have this on your bingo card? 41-0 shutout in week one. That's how you defend your home turf. That's how you make Farmer Nation proud. Old McDonald is gonna be having a cow when he sees the year Bullock's gonna have. So proud of our quarterback out here. He fought through the spring game and earned this job. Not gonna give up on Pepper, but for now, Siante, you got it, man. Very pleased with the results. I guess it just wasn't enough to top Kenya Jennis in his offensive performance for the Cowboys. As pleased as I am in game, I'm very, very encouraged by the recruiting board here. Le'Veon Eagles, our top running back target, as well as two other five stars in the lead and then currently winning on four stars as well. Just like a flood and how quickly it crashes in, Sheriff Flood, his recruiting battle's about to quickly come to an end and we're in the lead. We need him. Not truly really urgent with Siante there right now but i can see it blood the potato king washing away any doubts you had about this batch of potatoes now let's go ahead and check out the aztecs on the road snapdragon stadium maybe i'm completely off but this could be the first time we've traveled to san diego since we've been established in cuna idaho i'm excited to give it a go and i must warn the aztecs to brace themselves if they read the scouting report and saw anything about the last game I hope they're ready. The Chrome does look a little funky here at night games. Definitely shines brighter during the day, but that's not gonna stop this offense from performing. The poise to step up and deliver that ball, that was next level. It's gonna take a whole team effort if we're gonna walk in here on the road and knock out the Aztecs. Starts with getting on the same page and nothing like getting on the same page by delivering a ball right into what was supposed to be your tight end's hands. Thankfully, the Mountain West is full of opportunities. We should not be out of one game this entire season, at least in conference play. Non-conference, you never know. It's your guess as good as mine. I just know Brita and the Potato Kings are in my book, in an old McDonald's book, favorite to take this division. But heck, those are two of the most biased people to ask. We'll just let our play do the talking right back to it. There goes that man again. It's Brita. He is a hot topic for Bullock, just hitting up his line. On the zig here, that is the connection we want. Smythe just taking off looking to get down into the 15. I think we're gonna go ahead and disrupt this wide trail by throwing a corner route in here to Brita. Didn't seem to interrupt the flow of anything. Good play. And on fourth and one, this is massive. Let's step up to the right, scrambling around the edge and in. Tucking in the Aztecs. This is their last dance, man. They're not gonna wanna ever face us again. Going for it on fourth and two, down 35-7. I don't blame them for opening up the book here. How did he catch that? They caught me napping here. Could not call the onside recovery unit, but didn't matter. Gonna let Siante run a read option, keep it himself pick up two, three yards, was inches short of accomplishing what we asked of him. So let's go ahead and go for it on the cross screen here. Huh, miscommunication. Not looking to give them any reason. Let's take control of Brown here. The linebacker blitz him in, look to get through the line. And oh man, number three is out of here. Huge chunk play for the Aztecs. This fourth and goal, another big one. They're gonna dump it to the running back. A Calvary of potatoes waiting. We've already done it once. I guess they wanna remember how it feels doing it twice. He stepped out of bounds. Couple big defensive stands at the end, but it was out of reach. 42, 21, CUNA, Idaho. Your team is coming home victorious. Two player of the game accolades for Siante Bullock. You know how we have Pepper, right? I was racking my head on Bullock here. And then I remembered in his farmersmingle.com, his profile said he was a bull farmer. So that is the tie. And that is why he's doing so good. If you can work around bulls on the farm, surely you can work around some angry bull rushers from the defensive line. Mean, Clean, young, 2-0, ready for a dogfight in the Gold Rush Classic. On paper, Wyoming is regressing, 75 overall, not standing well against the test of time. Truly just a Laramie, Wyoming location problem. It's a tough sell to recruit guys out here. Not gonna stop us from hitting a gold mine traveling in to the barren Wyoming state. You already know we had to put on the shiny gold helmets to signal this great event. And I don't think they've had a chance to meet Bullock yet. 
but number 16 is going to introduce him with an interception. Okay, that's not the ideal first drive. Congrats to the Pokes, because that's the only Selly they'll be having the rest of the game. Mark my words. Down 7 0, I'm going to take it upon myself to get my team right back into contention. And when we do it, let's do it in a big way, tying it up. Gonna go for a second one right here. Why is that missing? The second time I've tried to run across screen, it did not pan out well. Gonna dump it to big old Brita, fighting, fighting, fighting third in inches. Obamba was blaring in the background. That is exactly the type of inspiration we need as a team first and goal. Opponents play that song like it's supposed to rattle us or something. In reality, it's Siante's favorite track. That dude blares that thing in the locker room, annoying some of the teammates, but when we're winning, they make exceptions. And they will happily continue to blow out their ears if it means more victories for the Cuna Potato Kings. You just saw that right. Minus 17 on the sack just makes for a more emphatic touchdown pass to Vilma. Absolutely in love with the James Vilma show. This star receiver has been rock steady three weeks into the year snapping it here going across the middle burrita dropped it offensive miscues and wyoming taking advantage of it they're right back in the game i'm telling you disregard everything you see on paper when it comes to rivalry games they are giving us a run for the money within two points we just need a couple yards here that'll pick up the first with that out of the way let's do one even better here if we can avoid getting sacked now fourth and 29 nothing out of the ordinary i mean we've been here before and we're gonna get it wait a flipping minute you're telling me we got about 27 of those 29 yards not enough to get the first down. Now forced to play some defense out here. Wide open over the middle. Uh-oh. Old McDonald, buckle in, man. Call the right plays. Do what you have to do to get your unit on the same page. Fourth and three. Here we go. Could not adjust to the inside slant. And as you might have expected, that drive was leading towards impending doom. We're down by five. I am not happy about it. They're literally making me eat my words when I said they would only be celebrating in the beginning. Coach Old McDonald needs to learn to keep his trap shut, especially if he's going to be costing us games like this. Thankfully, it's not over yet. So still room and time to work sending vilma out here on a corner route yeah he's not gonna get open but you know who is it's Smythe with a little nifty spin into the first and goal territory choosing to save our timeouts and just gonna hand it off to sal up the middle for some big yards now second and goal at the four i might look out for big old target brita here in the corner yo are you serious right now this brita guy at tight end has been living up to the hype talk about a senior making a splash i haven't really heard from him all dynasty until it's really mattered most like today the other day and the day before one point cushion with four seconds left we'll go ahead and try to get two more but yeah that sack's gonna sack us up like a hot potato sack we were going nowhere if we can just keep everything in front of us boys let's go this is it one second left final play of the game he's gonna chuck one out and who cares about that that was not a pass to win it all cuna kings walk into laramie and steal one from the jaws in the claws and the depths of despair a winning culture has a lot of positive effects one fruit of many is rico drugsma gem three-star athlete tight end an even better four-star gem share of flood is practically guaranteed scanning the rest of the conference early in this year everyone else has at least one loss back-to-back -back weeks back-to-back -back rivalries this one is just as important nothing like a little harvest heritage showdown in the rain big third down here they got a good quarterback that can resist the rain and as you can see See that strike was money back at it here close to the red zone and another dime okay looks like umass came out to play one and two on the season the minutemen will step up their game to any level when it's us looking to answer their score with one of our own we're moving it moving it grooving it not letting a little rain dampen our parade but we're gonna have to power forward fourth and two handoff sal get through Bruh, I'm just gonna come out here with a hot take. I love the Jizz Master as much as anyone else, but he has been underwhelming for a guy that's claiming to be elite dev. Heck, I don't know if I was expecting him to run through a brick wall every single run, but he just not has been up to par, at least early in this season. Third and long, I'm gonna look to Smythe here on the flood play, see if we can hit him up in the corner. Definite size mismatch there, receiver and cornerback. So we'll just go ahead and settle for three or no, we won't. This team is gonna have to dial in if we're serious about getting back into it. Now down a couple scores. Let's see if we can manage to get at least seven before going into halftime. To do that, I'm gonna need to step up here with Bullock, and there we go, the C parts 
and we got another first down. Smack dab on the potato logo. Feel the farm energy just course through our veins. Gonna throw one back for Vilma. Only three points, and now look, 28 to three. What does a potato have to do out here? Can we get a touchdown? UMass low-key exposing us out here in the showdown and we're throwing a costly in. Bullock's getting cold, and man, this is a shock to the system. Let's just go ahead and get mad and throw up some deep bombs and hope one of them or two work and get us inching into the game. That's one. Let's go ahead and see if we can do it again. Hype man, he looks like he has a step, and he does it to him. Two quick bombs. We're back in it, down by just two possessions. In this wet and wild one, I hope you stuck around because we have a show for all of our fans, or at least I thought we did. Number 10 is a ball hawk. No doubt about that whatsoever. And no doubt about Vilma's performance today. He wants to win. Third and nine, this is it. A minute left in the game. Can't just give up the first down. Absolutely not. Make a play. There it is, fourth down. They nailed the field goal, but who cares? The best news we've gotten is that it's a one possession game and there's no time to waste. Let's get back to what works. And truthfully, what's been working is the air raid. So I'm not gonna stay away from it. Fourth and three, let's just keep it simple and get the first down. Gonna call for a bench. I think that could have been that bent. Oh man, that was not the right call. That is his third interception of the day, and that's gonna cap it in the Harvest Heritage Showdown. As good of a season as it looks like it's gonna be, CUNY Kings are not infallible. UMass, any given year, can get that dub. We can move past that loss pretty quickly here when you got Gideon Mamula, four-star middle linebacker, and the Sheriff is in town. Mr. Flood gonna wash away all your crops. Better get some weather-resistant potatoes. Need to find a way to nip it in the bud fast, get back on the winning track. So let's come out in style with the all golds against Duke. It sure seems like there's a lot of rain in this year's farm season. Back at it again with another rainy CUNA Idaho. So instead of kicking the 51 yard field goal in the rain, I'm gonna trust Sal that he can turn around his season and we'll feed him with the HB slip screen. Back at first and goal, we can get dangerous here. Gonna call for a jet touch pass around the edge. Smythe, way to stick it in. Bake him up, mash him up, stick it on a stick. Wait, that's not how it goes. Bake him up, mash him up, boil him up, sauce him up, sour cream it up. I don't know, man. We just gotta play better football out here and let's get a stand it would make old mcdonald very happy if we, his team can actually hold him i suppose three points is better than seven and i'm gonna need another slip screen to go our way the safety valve that ability kicked into gear and this guy's got some juice oh my goodness key arrow was out of there shot out of a cannon sal jizzy has to take notes just like our defense i don't even know hit the textbook and take some new notes whatever we're doing in the first half duke is taking advantage looks like we're in for a barn burner but um uh, vilma catch and run yak him up slow and steady wins the race we have a wide open Vilma in front of me, so uh, I'm a fool not to take that as he sprints to the end zone first and goal. Now that we're here, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, Smythe. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, let's play. Who really needs to step up and play is the defense, for goodness sake. Definitely got bailed out by the Duke receiver getting out of bounds. Let's go back with a QB power and see if we can plunge in. It didn't work, so we're just gonna take the direct snap and walk it in, touchdown. Fourth quarter action, we're up by one. This has been a very good game. Happy that the team is showing resilience against a power five unit and a good one at that. What in the angle was that? I've never seen that video camera. Just take off into the sky like a drone. And come on now, that was too clean. Looks like Sal Jizz back in the backfield. Get us away from the end zone. One task there. And yes, we're gonna chew clock already. Banking on the fact we can get out of here and get a first down. Which maybe I'm silly for believing that. I think Vilma is a good receiver. Just give touches and let him go to work. I was right. He came through for us. And look at Sal with the whole... 
coming through. Look at the Blue Devils just absolutely stack that line. I don't know if they're ready for another touch pass because everyone just pinched up right there and it did not work out in their favor. No losses, only lessons. We're bouncing back in a big way. I am ecstatic about this result. Four and one. Let's just keep the pace going all the way to 11 and one season. How does that sound, guys? I feel like I've seen Siante's name up here every single game. There you go. They just love the CUNY King product. George Branson wants all of that. First five star to fall on the board. And I don't care that he's a bust because a five star bust with gold jammer, platinum team player, 89 speed, 91 Excel, 86 press has a spot on my team. Finding guys like Ben Gallimore halfway through the recruiting process is definitely a top notch quality. Travis Denny as well, 95 speed gem corner. I want them all and I want them now, man. Old McDonald said these players should have been on the team yesterday. A couple more big signees like Joshua with Ruben making an appearance. And yeah, this team sitting good early in the recruiting battle. Job's not finished, of course, but we're closing in on Le'Veon Eagles, closing in on Shaq Penny. Off to a great start with Travis Denny and Ben Gallimore. Had to find some new three stars to fill the board. And since we have cushion on the five stars and four stars we're going after, I might as well scout out the three stars and take our time. Like Darren Klug here, he's at the end of his journey and we already have him. Nothing like a little late night DM couldn't fix. David McPrescott, is he related? And any way to Dak Prescott. Now nah, I'm just playing, but that's a funny name. Here's a DM. Purdue was ranked in the preseason, but they've fallen from grace two and three. Using the Boilermakers, I'm sure we can boil up some dank potatoes. On paper, we're pretty fairly matched, but you can never, and I mean never underestimate a serious power five team. They've had hit or miss years of late, but it's never gonna be a walk in the park against a team like this. In fact, this could be our toughest game yet. So let's go ahead and make the right play calls take the open receivers like Vilma and make the lasting first impression. That's what it's all about. Gonna run the play action here, see if our tight end can spring free. And that went tragically in the wrong vicinity. Next thing you know, you're down 14-0 asking yourself how in the world could this have happened you're telling me that tight end didn't catch it fourth and inches that's what we're coming down to right here Sm no 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 Smythe. no off on a very bad foot here but that could change with a burn play by vilma i just wish that wasn't so close to the sideline or else he clearly would have been lost in the sauce moving quickly tight end springs free that's brita the senior pounding his way into first and goal hold the phone don't count us out completely just yet as bullet gets around a defender fights to the one seven seconds double slants here big tight end target now four seconds let's just take something sure thing across the middle boom we're in there touchdown one second to go third and five second half action here Smythe that's what I'm talking about. Fourth and 14, I need to act now. So I'm gonna send him on a corner route. He comes down with it, breaks a tackler, and in four, six. You couldn't see with the visual ticker bug, but that's now 24-14 on a huge fourth down conversion. A pair of field goals for Purdue. If we just keep scoring touchdowns, I think we'll be able to stay in this one. There's the senior tight end. We're back within a score. Down by five, Purdue looking to chew the clock already. It's time for a heroic performance out of the freshman. Stepping up into the left here on the run way to hit Heitman let's see if he can keep his poise and lead the team down a friendly neighborhood wide trail here that worked out first down more often than not a lot of zigging and zagging gets things open same with some tomfoolery here a little trick play let's just dump it to him hit the spin nothing yeah I'm gonna dial up the slip screen and it's Kiero back there I usually like his get up he did not have it on the last one maybe it's the crowd getting to him and here we go fourth and nine let's just take a one-on-one -on -one deep bomb to Vilma running right past the defender that is the lead cash in cha-ching how you like your potatoes today comment down below baked mashed here's a little boiled potato for the boiler makers over the top from Siante it was a fourth down. We knew the defense was gonna try to keep everything in front of them, but what about the deep ball? They weren't ready for the streak, just like they're not ready for this. Actually, I'm gonna sell, trust me. A field goal would have gave him the win. So I'm gonna let him score so we can score back. They missed the two point conversion. And that's what I'm talking about. Play chess while they're playing checkers. Now we just gotta execute our turn. And honestly, you're gonna let this one-on-one -on -one happen again to Vilma? Will you learn? Looks like they learned absolutely nothing. So we expose them again and we're in business now. And whoo, way to recover your own fumble. 
you almost just sold the game. Old McDonald would have had a stern talking to you. Now let's go ahead and finish this thing once and for all. Timeout. Good news, it's third and short. A first down will chew the clock, I mean, kill the clock. And that's exactly what we do here. Stumbling over my words just because of how intense the situation is. Down with 10 seconds to go, stepping to the right. Ah, <laughs> bro, this is so intense. Look at the defensive line though, so spread open. I'm gonna audible to a run. It might cost us the game, but I think it's too good of a chance to not take touchdown. We ran it in. And Kiero, you just did Cuna King something special. You just earned yourself a thousand fans on that one play back in Cuna, Idaho. And you definitely earned favor from your boy King Sponge. No time left. Going for it all interception game over started from the bottom now we're here 42 39 five in one on the season our best season right now on pace to have it this is incredible what a game and what a comeback there third and fourth quarter impressive stuff Forget Le'Veon Bell, if you remember that guy from Michigan State. Le'Veon Eagles has entered the frame. Forget Shaquille O'Neal, if you remember that guy from the Magic and Lakers. Because entering stage right, Shaq Penny. We got our guys, and now we've freed up so many hours. We can go ahead and schedule a visit for Travis Denny and go ahead and bring in Ben that same week. But realistically, we're in the driver's seat, and unfortunately, I just found out Alex Barkow was a gym the same week Bowling Green's gonna get him. There we go. Forest Roper. Looks like Spruce is in danger of transferring, but to me, this looks like a tight end build and a good one at that. 76 catching, decent excel, okay blocking. Definitely a pass-focused tight end. Mountain West Conference play the rest of the way, sitting at five and one. And looking at the opponent's win-loss record, there actually is a good chance we can run the table. Checking in from around the league, Boise State and Fresno State having good seasons. Four and two, five and two respectively. We won't see either of them this year unless the championship game comes knocking, of course. I want to take a quick second and get a deeper look at James Vilma. There's definitely a reason why he's cooking 136 yards per game. Platinum quarterback, best friend. And then with physicals, Platinum Press Pro sounds like a cheat code. Maximum ability to beat the press. That's why he had such an impact in the last one against Purdue. Coming down after the high against Purdue, we're crashing back down to New Mexico. The Lobos are having a season that's not necessarily worth writing home about. But honestly, what's new? No shade to these guys. It's just been a rough last decade or so. If we can, we'll be a good sport and put them out of their misery early. But heck, I started speaking crazy about some other teams and they proved me wrong just like a first freaking pass lurked out of the air. I'm sorry, I forgot they had Superman at safety. Need to find a way to make right here for our mistake. Gonna go across to Brita, keep this thing alive. Down by three, we can go ahead and write the score here with a little strike to Kiero at the one. Fourth and goal, just need to take matters into our own hands. QB draw, lower the head, fight forward, fumble into the end zone. Ah, shucks. Not sure why we're messing around so much with the Lobos. We should be getting out of this game as quickly as we possibly can. Yo, Vilma! I need to start calling that man Mr. Highlight Reel. It was tipped as we were throwing it, and he went back for it, got the 50-50 ball. Goal line action, no blocks whatsoever. Those things just dissipated. Maybe we'll have better luck this drive. I sure hope we can do it. Smythe, it didn't go so well the first time down here. And yeah, right now it needs to go better safety valve cash in did not expect to be in a battle here against the lobos but i guess i'm here for it i don't know hey we'll dump that one in over the shoulder now with the 21 16 lead we can go ahead and do what we do best cook defenders press pro has got to be one of my new favorite abilities i mean did you see that separation on the last one insane out here no doubt third and goal they're trying to get hyped up for the stop here we got a man it's guess who you already know worst case scenario we falter right now down by one should have known better than to think it was gonna be a cakewalk even if we're playing opponents like the lobos gonna see vilma just spring into action and take care of this thing if the ball was on the numbers instead we're forced to go for it here on fourth down folks let's go ahead and convert and who knows maybe this time we could see vilma go ahead and get the step we need hitting him in stride that 
is a potato king touchdown i'll bake one up for that fourth and two this looks like a run formation but i knew better i did, trusted my judgment called the cover clearly it didn't matter and now they're actually gonna go back to the run game and it works they sure like this single back formation here gonna trust the run again he's fighting in i don't think we need to see much else here they got the sure thing touchdown they take the lead up by one we just need the field goal for the win now we're gonna hand it off to sal who's gonna get the first down lobo's quickly springing into action calling timeouts it's not gonna help them because we're in it to win it inching closer and closer i want to get a few more yards to get comfortable with any field goal attempt really tempted here to just run the rock again and i did not mean to keep it 48 yard field goal i'm sure as heck not comfortable with a 40 something yard field goal so that's right i'm putting the game on the line i don't care i'm gonna go across the middle and go ahead and pick it up now i'm comfortable with that old mcdonald may have had a farm but on that farm he was more concerned about getting some dubbies dub skis took our final time out this is a 36 yard chip shot here i don't want to hear no excuses our kicker should be able to nail this in his sleep squeak it in yes the red bar scared me but he did it as time expires prater doing his best matt prater in the nfl impression that's a game winner shocking the lobo fans they're like no our mountain west dreams are crushed today we brought the potatoes and now look we got a side of protein smoking on that lobo's pack stocking up and all that good stuff like Dion hillman jay ficken and plenty more right around the corner not sure why we're at risk of losing beard in kegler kegler i get because he's like fourth on the depth chart but beard starting and there's really nothing you can complain about six and one new mexico surprised us so let's not take the aggies for granted having called up this play in a minute let's try a reverse pass and see if something wacky can happen if only blocks held for just another second i think he would have been there instead we got a second and ten and a wide open smite down the sideline i'll go ahead and stretch this one back to the left let sal get to work and he coughed it up took a big hit it's gonna need a breather after that one now with a third down we're gonna call up our best one here to vilma that guy is seriously certified what a stud man we've said it all year long but we're really gonna miss him when he graduates after the season smooth sailing in this one down into the final minutes here of the second quarter yeah you already know who I'm calling up. Going with a little RPO if the run is not there. We already know the press pro was going to beat him. Had a little help from his friends, which is cool. Now it's second and goal. You got to break free of that. Some defenders kick it up another gear when it's at the goal line. And it looks like Utah State's got some dudes. And yeah, we're going to pay. That last play is exactly the reason why it's recommended you run it in the goal line. But when you're at midfield on the third down, by all means, just air it out. Press pro again is crazy that's got to be my favorite ability like i high key have a whole film room of press pro wins gonna have to peep that very soon this game's over so we're seriously just trolling at this point going for it on fourth and 13 nothing came out of it a win is still a win 35 24 let's pack our bags idaho up north here we come the road show continues to chug along wolf pack here we go the game just started and i swear it feels like it's over already on fourth down we're running a qb power and it works first down now gonna take our strike to the end zone take two across the middle Kane comes through I might as well do them a favor and end this thing as quickly as possible they're three and five and I just don't want them to have to suffer any longer let's get them to the offseason so they at least can recover from what the heck's happened here because whoop there it is Smythe quickly 21-0 on their home turf they might have gotten one but i can confidently say that it is gonna be too little too late and i don't know if you all caught that but that's emmanuel pepper out here slinging it he's thrown for two touchdown passes since stepping in make it three if we didn't collide but yeah good to see him spell in and perform it's been the all siante show this year but i know pepper's more than capable of stepping up both pepper and siante are young guns and i would say for sure nothing's ever locked for next year if a good offseason comes pepper could take the job back I'm not emotionally attached to either of them as a coach should be, even though I must say I'm a sucker for the pepper last name. It just goes well when you pepper up the potatoes, you know what I mean? Instead, he's focused on peppering interceptions. Can't do that. No point hanging around this game any longer. Fourth and three, they're down by 17 points. There was nothing they could have done in just 
to put the dagger into it. Alojuku, number 37, sends him home with a wave. I didn't have any questions. Old McDonald sure didn't have any questions. That's a wrap. The only question Old McDonald had is what happened to Siante. And a quick peek here at the injury report shows he's not there. So we can assume he's healthy and good for the next one, unlike Tevin Leota and Steven Johnson. That next one you ask is against the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. It was a successful road show. 8-1, 21st in the nation. I think this is our first time we're ranked. Big things, truly big things are growing here in CUNA, Idaho. For now, let's go ahead and stop the Rainbow Warriors in their tracks. I had a quick peek at Vilma's in-season record right now, and minus that touchdown, we can go focus on offense. Rudely, rudely interrupted by them scoring a touchdown. I was trying to say Vilma has 16 touchdown catches, and he's going to make it 17 on this corner strike. Ultimately, what I'm after here is a Heisman campaign from our boy quarterbacks playing well receiving and tight end room playing well yeah this team's hitting their stride at the right time speaking of stride i spy vilma on the outside looks like a one-on-one -on -one for sure so why the heck would you ever test me with the sorry cornerback like number 12 absolute blowout here in progress 42 13 are you kidding me? The best part is this is the first time we've been able to sell out our stadium. I guess all it took was for the Potato Kings to get ranked. All the farmers come flocking in. There ain't no way they're going to go and miss this on-field show. That's balling week in, week out. It's getting scary, 63-13. Siante Bullock might as well be flirting with Mountain West all-time records. Scratch that. He's going for his 10th touchdown pass. And if you get 10 of them suckers, I guarantee you that's probably an NCAA record. Absolutely. Luke Clinic today, 70 to 19. And there's still room for more humbling ourselves at the end with an interception. I'll go ahead and take one NCAA record. They're not showing any on-screen pop-up for that performance. I really wish they had more of those in the NCAA video game, like when you break a school record or national record. They used to have those in the NCAA 14 game. And now that I think about it, I saw it one time for an opposing quarterback, but seriously, it doesn't happen every time. I guarantee you 10 touchdown passes broke some kind of record, whether it's Mountain West or NCAA. Absolute bonkers stat line. There's never been a question but Vilma is by far the favorite target as his mental ability states best friend I totally forgot we scheduled visits for guys like Travis Denny four-star gem corner and they just witnessed a historic performance so yeah why wouldn't these guys want to come to the team national player of the week honors for Vilma it's about time his name gets recognized and his heroics of late have thrust himself right into the Heisman conversation oh man so close 11 touchdown passes from David Klinger out of Houston in 19 1990 is the NCAA record. Siante was one short, but you better believe he put his name in the record book in the Mountain West. Our first Potato King record holder. And you know what? Vilma is well on his way to catch up with Troy Edwards at a Louisiana Tech. 27 touchdown catches. I think we're close around the 20. In the Mountain West, as it stands, Devontae Adams had 24 touchdown catches in 2013. So that's who we're gunning for. With two games left, we're three touchdowns away from catching Devontae Adams and then six touchdowns away from catching the national record holder. In all the dynasties I've done so far, I'm yet to have a receiver have a single season performance like this. You know what? Cave in my Eastern Washington rebuild was a Heisman winner, but I still don't think it was as lethal as the season Vilma's having. Let's see if we can chase down history an inch closer in this game against the Rams. I don't want this to change the complexity of the team, but there's no doubt I'm going to be feeding Vilma every opportunity I get and it's gonna cost us sometimes too, just like this interception. You're honestly about to see me act like a fool here trying to force feed. And yeah, no doubt team success matters a lot more than individual success, but I can't deny it feels sweet to get one touchdown closer with Vilma. He is a big, big reason why we are where we're at today. Come on, man. Number two just absolutely outdid the two guys covering him. I'm gonna go audible into a deep cross and hope something springs free over the middle. And it does right through. What a tip by the defender. Looking for a way to win and throw it to Vilma pretty much every single time. Number three, Press Pro lit up and he just took three, four steps right past the corner. I think Bullock or Pepper, no matter who's back here at the helm, they're all gonna benefit from a performance like this. Number four, can you just see the separation it gets? Like this is Heisman mode and we're playing against Colorado State, which is like an 80 overall team and it's still not even close. I guarantee you if it was Ohio State, he'd still be making everyone look like child's play. Count them up, one, two, three, four, five touchdowns. He's blown Devontae Adams' record out of the water, and now he is one touchdown catch away from breaking 
a national record there it is six touchdowns and i shouldn't say breaking yet that ties it so he is actually one touchdown away from having it all by himself truly truly spectacular a treat for all CUNA Idaho fans. Already up 42-7 in this one. We got one game left on the calendar against Air Force, but why wait? We want the record now and seven touchdowns. He has all our points. When I truly focus in on Vilma, it's like I can have all world performances every single week. That is history on this ball floating in to number 15. You can practically guarantee he just locked up Heisman when you're breaking a national record in a season that hasn't been broken in 40 years. This was a historical landmark in time. Where were you, CUNA Idaho fans? All my potato kings, it's time to ride. We baked more than we baked before. We mashed everyone in our way. There are literally no more critics left to boil. These potatoes are golden. No brainer back-to-back -back national player of the week. And this would have been a great time for Dynasty Mode to kick in with some sort of screen, pop-up, in-game message to celebrate that we just broke a national record. Instead, we're gonna have to dig through the archives and find out for ourselves that in a single season, James Vilma is all alone atop the mountain. That last game, he also tied Rashawn Woods for seven touchdowns in a single game. And I think Old McDonald's really happy with what he's seen, sky high on his team, so much so we're projected at the moment to get into the first round. There's literally no sweat or pressure for number 13 CUNA against one win Air Force. To celebrate this joyous occasion and a national record-breaking receiver, we're gonna wear the gold unis to go out this season in style, rain or shine we're getting it done there's another one for James some people are going to discredit him since after all this is the Mountain West Conference nothing too crazy but I'm going to tell you right now we keep playing like this old McDonald's on the fast track to getting his team to a power conference it might just be as soon as next season the whole team is just absolutely sizzling right now and I felt like it was a good time to get James Vilma his 30th touchdown catch of the season isn't that just video game arcade like numbers can you even fathom 30 touchdown catches in a season just need to be sure we keep the foot on the gas as there's a Mountain West championship game and national playoff berth on the line all of those things matter to us and take a look at this we tried to throw someone not Vilma. It did not work out. So we're punting it back to the Falcons. I guess I should also note it is a rain game after all. So passing should not be the forte. Regardless, it's always in style to score points. Can never get enough of that. Up 35-13, Coach McDonald's literally suggesting I just keep going air raid after air raid, strike after strike. 31 touchdowns mountain west or not 31 touchdown catches you gotta be a lock for first round in the nfl draft we're on pace to prove all the haters wrong because in a national championship run vilma will take on some of the best corners in the nation that will determine if he's really like that this season we're checking off so many boxes and i've been waiting for this moment the gem state grudge match it's been a couple of years of absence and in no better time like the mountain west championship game this year something just clicked i'm not gonna lie it's all adding up the 12th best recruiting class in the nation just a massive cherry on top right now no better time like the present for old mcdonald at acuna idaho just 20 or so minutes away from boise idaho wearing the all gold for all of idaho making bronco fans pack the bus and come on up to cuna to see their team in a mountain west championship showdown that's not vilma to start off the game the first pass goes to Heitman and he's gone. Must have been a lot of attention on the other side of the field because you can't let him slip through the cracks. Winner of this game presumably will get into the national championship playoff bracket. Boise State's 20th ranked in the nation. We're 11th ranked. Whoever wins will get a massive surge in the rankings as well as playoff hopes as Boise State on the goal line intercepts us. It looks like they're running this back. So we're in for a gem state grudge match after all down 14 to 7 i'm about to pull out the secret weapon it's james vilma let's see if he can win against this boise defender add it to the very end low-key impressed with that defense fourth and seven by no means am i punting it the high low route right there in press pro is unguardable flag on the play that looks like holding of course our 95 overall guard just got toasted but look at press pro kick in again we'll just hit him with a strike tie this thing up seriously so glitchy man first and goal if the blocks can hold up which they do not sal's gonna have to run his way through let's go ahead and stretch it back to the right see if he can get the edge 
come on. The run game's honestly not as effective at the goal line, which is why I feel like I pass so much in the red zone. 21 apiece with a minute to go. Insurance points would be a big plus. Before halftime gets here, I'd like to see what we can do. There's Brita down the sideline. You've seen a lot of verticals to Vilma. I'm gonna spread the love just a little bit here in the championship game. We have a full team. Vilma's not the only senior. This Brita guy right here, he too is one and wants this national championship badly. I'd be doing the team a disservice if I didn't highlight everyone else that's contributed to this run. Up the middle, there's Sal. You better call him because I take back some of the smack I had for him earlier in the season. He had a good year. Now we're running it up fourth and one Boise State going for it. What can they find? He's going to just step up and walk it in. Big touchdown. Third and one edge pressure coming in. So old McDonald's saying go for it on fourth and two. Mountain West Championship on the line. If we convert, this game's pretty much already over. So that is all she wrote. Hand off to Sal. Boom. Convoy. Lane first town two minute drill just gonna chew out the clock but first we're gonna need to get through Boise's timeouts a jet touch pass is always a good option I've realized well I shouldn't say always but it works more often than not when a team's trying to chew clock settling for three points I just know Boise State's gonna have a huge grudge going to next season hands up for the champions it's gonna be a cookout up here in CUNA Idaho our soil content our golden potatoes old McDonald's backyard be there be square for the Boise State Broncos they'll just have to settle for the second best potatoes not not bad for consolation, but you ain't touching our golden potatoes today. Look at the Mountain West Championship trophy right here for CUNA Idaho. Now let's get ready for the national championship run. End of the season pre-playoff look. Siante Bullock had 63 touchdown passes. That's gotta be a record too. Everyone's just out here breaking records. 23 ants need to cut back on that, but I'll happily take a three to one ratio. With a pass heavy air raid, Sal only touched Pater three times, but really good rushing on a six yard per carry clip. I can't help but just laugh. 93 catches, 2,193 yards. 32 touchdown catches, 169 yards per game. Mind boggling. Oh yeah, and there's Al Heatman who had a good season too. What about Smythe, nine touchdowns? Rita, 730 yards, nine touchdowns as a senior tight end. That's a good year, but it obviously pales in comparison to Vilma who just went on to sell the most jerseys in NCAA history as well. Everyone's a Potato King fan all of a sudden. Defense, nothing pops off the page here, but it really doesn't have to when you have an offense like you do. Our second half performance as a team was so good in in fact, we leapfrog the first round. We have a bye. Quarterfinal bid, fourth seed, awaiting the winner of Michigan, Wisconsin. So that's tough. With us, the one seed, Oklahoma, three seed, Oklahoma State, and number two, Tulsa. Three Oklahoma schools all got first round buys. What? Time to start bringing in the awards. Player of the year, James Vilma. Give him that 2029 Heisman Trophy, baby. And tack on best receiver, no doubt. Looks like Danny Berger had a successful campaign. Best DB award. No coach of the year, no tight end of the year. A couple other accolades I felt like could be missing. The Peach Bowl has been determined. Michigan, CUNA up next. The Mountain West was a cakewalk compared to what we are about to see in the Chick-fil-A Bowl against Michigan. Old McDonald's prepped his guys all year long for moments like this. Higher seed, but we're still the underdog. I want to shock the world. First in 10 into the red zone. Miscommunication. We're going to start off the game with a six from Brita. Snubbed of tight end of the year. Going to need a lot of firepower with all the stars out here for Michigan. Third and nine. A little help from our friends here on defense. Would never hurt. Fourth down. Wolverines are relentless. Back within the red zone again and scoring this time a big six. Down 17-7. Here we are. Everything's just happening so fast. 24-14. Second quarter play. Chick-fil-A Bowl has been a movie so far. Let's just go ahead and take it. Have not been able to call Vilma's name much yet, but this is the time. And I just realized I missed a wide open running back. Forced it into double coverage to the Heisman. Didn't work. Just need to hold it down right here on third. Make a play. Knox, Pat Knox, the sophomore. Yes. As sweet as that was, look at the score. We're down tremendously right now. This is unacceptable. Really about to be first round exited. They know better over here in Michigan to give him cushion. Look at that defense. Pressing up like a lot of Mountain West opponents did is just a death wish. They're doing it right over here and clamping him up. Here we are on fourth down. Just going to need to take a shot here. It's intercepted, and that is going to be the hopes and dreams for Cuna King 
in this year's edition of the college football playoffs. Not really much else I could say. Michigan showed up here in this edition of the playoffs and have a good chance of going far. Regardless, I'm proud of the CUNY Kings. They had a lot of fight in them and bounced back, I would say, in a big way after just getting six wins last year. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but this team still somehow has yet to win a bowl game. The bug comes back to bite us again. We're about to be 0-4 in, in these big bowl games games but you can't say we didn't go down without a fight michigan was just the better team and they flat out knew how to defend our best weapons like vilma until it mattered most of course at the very end the heisman has been quiet most of the night but he's gonna make his presence felt on the final garbage time touchdown wish it could have been sooner man we needed you but it's also not all on you it's not your fault if we score twice and recover two onside kicks that's the only way we win and yeah it was improbable it didn't make much sense 45 35 michigan wolverines are advancing just sucks to see the season come to a crashing halt but by far the best season in cuny king history some people didn't even know where i Idaho was on the United States map until we got to this national playoff bracket. We're getting a lot of recognition for old McDonald, his golden potatoes, and the team. Sophomore right guard at 96 overall. Jamal Keller is projected to be a first round draft pick. Extremely low persuasion chance, but doesn't stop us from trying. Yeah, I didn't think so. I know it's a bit sombering to go into the offseason as Oklahoma took the national championship, but at least Jamal Keller, first round pick. But this one right here outrageous best receiver in ncaa history of all time at least from a one season perspective james vilma third round pick you're telling me every team passed on him twice brother he's about to make everyone pay in the nfl and then good old sal getting a six round flyer we'd love to see it i think one of the best things to happen here was all of the publicity our team just got because look at four star thomas pitts gabriel dunham they're all prestigious guys and they all want to become potato kings the board's also open to a bunch of two stars but just to make sure i'm not missing out on anyone i'm gonna sort it by ranked here and just go down the list from a three and four star perspective we're good so i'm not gonna bother with any two stars in a shocking twist of fate though high schooler steven whitaker four-star gem safety who locked us out for playing style wants to come crawling back to us in miami he's not even in the running anymore you think you can just ditch us earlier in the year and then get a spot with old mcdonald no 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 sir you must be mistaken all right i'll cut the act he's definitely welcome here welcome home son since we have the hours to play with why not scout some of these guys that want to transfer in i think gabriel dunham is a splendid addition to the secondary it was already good but we can always get better 11th in the nation here thomas pitts the middle linebacker got some good abilities and good attributes that's a winner if i've ever seen one sal just left for the nfl portilla here transfer freshman 92 speed i wouldn't say no and then i'm not sure if i've introduced you to abdul atwell a gem kicker got 90 kick power on that leg need that in a nutshell that's all we're going after and the cards are aligning got the high schoolers we want out of the way now it's just time to focus on the transfers and finish the job gabriel dunham wants a championship contender and good news for him we have that here there we go tony portilla and are you serious though we just lost pitts and dunham last second shoot that's a stunning turn of events well life goes on and if i didn't clarify to you already i'll clarify again now we're three star prestige we just got a one and a half star boost national signing day we come in with the 11th best class every player we signed was intentional three five stars seven four star 14 three star with sal leaving eagles has arrived let's just say this is what a dynasty looks like and this is the goal of every team when building all right so here's the deal we have a lot of quarterbacks in this room and we just brought in two more in Ben Gallimore, Sheriff Flood. I mean, check out those physical traits, platinum magician, gold off platform. So what I'm tempted to do is move a guy like six foot two Antoine Lockett. Let's add him to the receiving room. Clearly an athlete with 95 speed, 83 catch. He should fit in right away. And he's still young enough to make a long-term difference. Deron Bland's relative. We just moved him from corner to safety. I think he'll actually get thrust into a starting role here. Training in the off season, coupled with some good physicals and mentals should cook. But I just need to come out and say, man, this team is looking really good couple subtle moves here and there but the big news training results are in everyone was pounding the iron 88 overall 87 offense 89 defense this team's cracked i mean just look at all the 90 overalls high 80s it's deep it's very very deep taking a small step back in receivers obviously when you lose heisman and player of the year but quarterback converted receiver is already number two on the depth chart worked on his hands took it seriously 
95 speed, like I said, but up to 90 catching. Lots and lots of practice here. Offensive line full of high 80s and 90s should be protected on most fronts. The defense, which was our kryptonite against Michigan, took a big step up. 90s here across the defensive line. Young linebackers like Rob, 89 overall. 90 from Chip Coleman. Salter and Luter, as well as Femi, all 85 and up. Secondary is definitely one of our gem pieces. They're getting older, but Berger and Bloom into the 90 threshold. Bland, serviceable, and Beard up to an 89 with a couple platinum badges. The ever-pressing question, where will CUNA play next season? Clearly outgrown the Mountain West. Is it the ACC? Well, that doesn't make much sense geographically. The Big Ten, not too optimal. A couple farm heavy teams like Iowa and Nebraska, so it's definitely a candidate. Big 12 makes a lot of sense just based on the geographic region here. Got teams like Utah, farm schools like Kansas. Texas has a big presence as well. I think this is the favorite at the moment. The only other option could be the SEC, but I'm thinking if all goes well in the Big 12, this might be like the final boss for CUNA. So that seals it now that we talked it through. I'm gonna go ahead and pluck CUNA out of the Mountain West and into the Big 12. All set in the Big 12, ready for the new season. Just wanna go ahead and check out some of our freshmen. Ben Gallimore, a star. Sheriff Flood, really excited about the Platinum Magician. He too is a star. Navigating over to running back. We got some good ones atop the list, but watch out for freshman Le'Veon Eagles. Eagly out here with the elite dev trade. Added a couple more stars as well on the offensive line. And remember Shaq Penny, the five star. Well, he's a star 81 overall day one. Even Joshua Rubin, the four star at the bottom of our depth chart is a star. It's clearly a star studded cast. They're everywhere you look. Even five star bust George Branson panned out as a star. So you can never count out busts, especially if they have that five star rating. Four star gem on the other hand travis denny what do you know look at the depth trait yep the potato kings are cracked and shaping up to become a formidable foe even in their first year of the big 12 this upcoming season that's gonna do it for me if you're soaking it up with king sponge hit that subscribe button drop a like leave a comment down below let me know what you're thinking and yeah signing off here this was by far the most exciting episode of cuny king football i really hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned the next one is sure to be another banger